I am in the middle of a thought process and I felt like I can't work through this unless I talk about it on camera. So I'm going to talk on camera about this thing where I am... Um, well, the thing is, I want... No, the two. there are two things. Uh, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, I am trying to, uh, well, tidy my craft room slash office. And to do that, I have made a couple of flow charts to help me sort fabric and papers into categories. But that work is <clears throat> gigantic. It will take a long time. So what I've done in the meantime is to, as I talked about in another video, uh, I've sort of gathered everything I'm not using at the moment in big old boxes that I keep in a wardrobe and I call them my shop boxes because that's where I go to shop. I can't uh, buy anything more because I have so many supplies. Anyway, so one part of this is I want to process all my stuff so that my office slash craft room becomes ordered like a paradise of structure but to do this I also I have bought Leuchtturms for the coming year that I want to prep the same way that I'm prepping my December Leuchtturm so what I want to do is paint backgrounds for my journaling section in each of these books and, and this is sort of the point, <laughs> and add bits and pieces that I uh, take from my load of stuff. Like, um, I want to use up all these little, like, pieces of paper, fabric, borders, all of those things. I want to do that um, ahead of time so that when I start using a book, it's beautiful and prepped like this, uh, so I don't have to do it as I'm planning and journaling in it, because that feel to me feels like laying the tracks while the train is moving, and I prefer to have it all um, prepped beforehand. So I'm sort of thinking I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to use up my stash actually three stones. <laughs> no, three birds. <laughs> I'm going to use up my stash so that I can buy a new stash. Uh, I'm going to tidy my craft room by using up the stuff and I'm going to prep my planners for next year. So all of those things, uh, will I will achieve them by doing this. So this hinges on me staying with the setup I've currently got, which is <clears throat> that I, um, you know, I leave room in the front for my Dutch doors um, where I plan during the month and then all of these pages are for journaling. So I've started doing this in my December book. So I've left one signature. I talked about this in a previous, previous video so that I have room for my weeklies and also for my next actions because right now my next actions are in the back book but I'm planning to change the set of, setup of the back book. I'm so, uh, I don't know, rushed, I can't speak. Um, I want to only use the back book for projects so the next actions will move into the front book, which I think will help me actually see what needs doing and not willfully ignore my next action lists because I sort of do when they're in the back. So the back book should only be projects, both current and uh, the stuff from my someday maybe insert. So in the future, I'm thinking I'm, I'm only going to have Two books, the front book and the back book for uh, daily planning, next actions and journaling and projects both near and far. And the strings, I can still use them for like 
stuff I want to keep, like maps or um, maybe folders with the tickets or something or just um, doctor's appointments, stuff that I need to um, remember or, or store. Maybe my exercise program can be an insert, but it's a narrow, they are narrower inserts than this big old someday maybe section. <clears throat> so, so, the point, let's get to the point line. Um, <clears throat> yes, if I put my next actions in the Dutch doors of my monthly booklet, I, I need space for them. So, as I said in that previous video I was talking about, I want to use only one signature for the booklet because then I can rip it out when the month is done. Uh, and the point of that is that my planning is very messy and it's not something I want to keep because this is what it looks like and it's just, you know, I cross things out with a gold pen and that's what you see afterwards, just things that are crossed out and you can't read them. So uh, I'm thinking if I rip it out, I get rid of it and I can have, I can use journaling pages for my memory keeping and that one memory a day thing that I've been doing uh, like uh, this. Um, and bonus, if I rip it out, I will have more room for things that bulk up the rest of the pages, like, you know, when I add postcards or just embellishments, which makes the book uh, very thick. But I make room for that by at least uh, ripping out one signature. Yes? Good idea? Um, but when I counted my next action pages, and sort of thought, can I um, merge some of them so I don't have this many because these are my work next sections and uh, these are my home next sections. So that's a lot of pages, but I can merge some of them and I can uh, give them less room. Like here, I've, I've um, dedicated a whole spread for Googling. Well, maybe I don't need to do that. I can merge it with uh, filming and photographing, which I do with my uh, iPad, and the the mobile phone iPad context. I mean, all of this, all of those three can be the same context. So everything I do with a mobile phone or my iPad, i.e. Googling, filming, photography. Um, so that's one way of minimizing how much space they need, but after doing that, after restructuring my next actions, I still need, what was it, 20, 28 pages. Uh, so, I haven't counted out 28 pages in this one, only 20, 26. But, <laughs> there's a loophole. What if I start here on the funky page <laughs> where the pages are stuck to each other, they're glued together like this. But I could, actually maybe you can sort of separate them. <gasps> can you do that if you're careful so that I can use this space so that this will also be a part of the booklet yes look at that so this means that I'll need to this fold should be here instead the weekend fold I'm gonna have to make a list of terms that I use, the monthly booklet, the weekend fold, <laughs> the, uh, well, whatever. So uh, I can cut this and make this the first weekly, which means that I'll get an extra spread for my next actions. Isn't that great? 
Yes, it is. Um, yes, so weeklies, that's uh, up till week 52. And here is an extra spread. So, <laughs> yes, yes, this will be perfect. So uh, let's just do this before I change my mind. <laughs> Uh, let's see if this is the right, yes. So many things are sort of falling into place. I love it. But it's taken four years. I started bullet journaling when I fell down that rabbit hole in 2017. And I've been through so many phases uh, and now finally I'm finding my style I'm finding what works for me so yes I still have this page that I will glue onto the inside cover of my uh, setup so I'm gonna remove this the, the front cover of this glue it in like this um, and now that I know that I can, um, that I need 28 pages for a month that is five weeks, and if it's less than five weeks, I can use the extra space for doodling or whatever. Um, I know that the trackers will be on page uh, 24, 25, and the journaling will always begin on page 26, because I always use Leuchtturm. So, this means, no, <laughs> this is different, why is it different? Um, this is embarrassing, why is it different? A different number of pages. Okay, well, um, let's just... Uh, well, let's begin, just to be sure, uh, I can begin on page 28 to, to prep my pages. Let's see what this one is like. I was so happy that I found the... Well, okay, yes, I will start every journaling section on page 28. So that's where I start painting and I leave. So yes, I will um, start prepping my pages on page 28 in each of these books. So that, that, I, that I'm sure that I have left enough room for the booklet. And just pray that this is the setup I'll use throughout 2022 and if I don't well then I'll just have to you know work with it with prepped pages even though you know I don't know no I'm going to take a leap of faith so this means that I can there's an extra bonus because when I prep my pages, it takes a while to dry, obviously. But if I prep, what is it, five books at the same time, when one dries, I can work on another one. So probably once I've prepped a spread in five books, the first one is ready to go. I can flip the page and continue. <laughs> so um, this one, uh, I bought it because I thought it was good a good colour for February. This one is for July, I think. No, wait, June, August and April. So I'm thinking I will use each book for two months. And since I already know what, uh, what time of year I will use them, I'm getting rid of these. Um, I can um, prep the pages with the right colors. So since this is a winter book, 
I will prep the pages with a blue, turquoise, silver and images of snow and stuff like that. Snowflakes, icicles, <laughs> skating, I don't know. I'm kind of um, excited for this because it's going to uh, solve so many problems in one go. I don't really like these either, I don't use them, but I'm not going to rip them out just yet because I might change my mind. Uh, if there's one thing that is sure in life, it's that I am going to change my mind, but I'm still going to prep these. I mean, if, if you know, the worst happens and I really don't like using a prepped book for my planning, then I can just use it for something else. I mean, it will be good for something and I can buy some kind of secondhand uh, disposable notebook that isn't expensive like these are. So, yes, did you follow that? <laughs> uh, leave 27 blank pages and then prep for journaling. And all of these, I should say perhaps, are front books. So they'll go in the front of my setup and the back book will be more permanent. And it's for, for, for my projects. So I've um, started prepping the pages where I'm going to write monthly stuff um like what to do in march what to do in april every year uh yeah i i don't think i have anything more to say the next step will be to actually do this and maybe film it as a craft with me i don't know we'll see <laughs>